Hi, so I want to talk to you about this particular problem that was sent to me by a viewer of the channel. Thank you very much for that. And I asked in the community tab recently whether or not that this thing is context free. So pause the video and try to think whether or not this thing is context free. And the answer is it is a context free language, surprisingly. And you may think, well, how is that possible? Because the language a to the n, b to the n, c to the n with n at least zero, that thing is not context free. And it looks like this thing is very similar because we got n's in the exponents in all places. The trick is that uh, there's a very small dependence on the number of c's compared to the number of a's. So C kinda is related to the A's, but not in a very strong way. Only the remainder when divided by three uh, does it actually, um, it, that's the only dependence. There is a dependence between the A's and B's in that they march pretty much lockstep, but the number of C's um, is a very small dependence. So I wanna convince you that this language is context-free. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this language L and the three cases we need to worry about are when n is a multiple of three, when n is one modulo three, or n is two modulo three. So remember n mod three is, what is the remainder when n is divided by three? And there are only three possibilities. The remainder is zero, one, or two. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna split it up into three languages, L, zero, one, and two, depending on what the remainder is. One other thing we should note is that uh, n divided by three uh, may not be an integer, so I'm gonna take the floor of that so it always is an integer because we can't have a, I don't know, one and a half b's or something. So L0 is gonna be when n is a multiple of three. So if n is a multiple of three, then there are no c's in the string at all because three mod any multiple of three mod three is zero. So we have a to the n, b to the n over three, and I don't need the floor here because we know n to be a multiple of three, such that n is at least one, and n is equivalent to zero mod three. Okay, so I'm gonna change these to be different colors so it's easier to differentiate them. So uh, here, this notation just means n is, has remainder zero when divided by Three. It's equivalent to zero when divided by three. It is remainder is. Okay, so then L1 is going to be when n is one modulo three. So there is exactly one C at the end. So I'm going to have something very similar. A to the n, B, and I need the floor here because n is not a multiple of three. So then let's see. So then we have exactly one C. N is at least one and n is equivalent to one mod three. And then L2 is very similar. So I'm gonna have a to the n, b to the, I still need the floor here. And with two c's because uh, c, the n is two mod three. So I need to have two c's at the end. So n is at least one, n is equivalent to two mod three. And one thing that we can notice immediately is that L, the original language, is the union of the three languages we just made. So if we can convince ourselves that each one of these L, 0, 1, and 2s are context-free, then closure under union will tell us that L, the original language, is context-free. So let's, let's build L0's grammar first. I mean, you can make a PDA for each, but I'm going to make a grammar. So for L0, I'm gonna have a start variable called S0. Well here, the base case is when N is equal to one, which means that, um, uh, uh, sorry, not, not one, is three, because it needs to be at least one, but needs to be a multiple of three anyway. So the smallest N I'm allowed to have is exactly three in order to satisfy both of these. So if I have exactly three to be N, that means I have three A's and exactly one B. So the, the base case here is three A's with one B. And then the recursive case is when 
Well, n's got to go up by 3 every time to satisfy this constraint. So that means I'm going to have three more a's and one more b. So I'm going to have three a's followed by something that the grammar can make as zero, and then a single b at the end. And that one is pretty simple then as a result. So let's, let's handle L1 then. So for L1, I'm going to have the start variable called S1. We'll note that every single string in this language ends in a C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a variable T with a C at the end. So I can generate that one C and have the T variable be focused on the first part right here. So let's, let's generate that first part. So what is the base case here? Well, the smallest n I'm allowed to have is, well, it has to be at least one and, a, and one modulo three. Well, the smallest one that satisfies both of these is one. So if n is one, that means I have to have a single a here and one divided by three when taking the floor is zero. So I'm gonna have no b's here. So I'm gonna have one a and no b's. Let's put that in. So then what is the recursive case? Well, n's got to go up by three every time to satisfy this constraint over here. So if it goes up by three, then that means I'm going to have uh, three more a's and one more b. So I'm going to have three a's and one, uh, followed by something that the t variable can make uh, because we're recursing, and then a single b at the end. And then finally, the grammar for L2 is also very similar. So I'm going to have L2. So that start variable I'm going to call S2 is going to go to, I'm going to make a variable X with two C's at the end. And when we're going to do that, we're going to have uh, the, something very similar to this. Well, what is the smallest thing I can have? Well, N has to be at least one and two mod three. Well, the smallest one that satisfies both is two. So if n is two, I'm gonna have two a's here and two divided by three taking the floor is zero again. So I'm gonna have two a's uh, followed by no b's as the base case. So I'm gonna have two a's, no b's. And then the recursive case yet again is three more a's to satisfy the second constraint and one uh, b at the end. So I'm going to have three A's followed by something that the, the, that X variable can make, followed by a single B at the end. And then to finish off the whole thing for a grammar for the entire, uh, for the entire language, so I'm going to have L, I'm going to have a variable S, which is the real start variable, is going to go to S0 or S1 or S2. And so that's a way to show that context-free languages are closed under union because you can just take the union of the start variables of the original grammars, making sure that there's no variables in common, which we were able to do here. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about whether or not you thought that this was context-free um, and any other techniques that you wanted to use to show this. This language is obviously not regular, but there are other things you might be able to say about this language, but it definitely is context-free. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.